Welcome to the Calm Part Collective. What's up, everyone? This is Sterling Brown of the Combat Collective here again. We're covering everything you want to know about the 2021 BattleBots season as we start to break down the third week of the BattleBots championship season. We're here, of course, with the TCC 10, our top 10 BattleBots power rankings, but also the news coming out of this third week of BattleBots here as uh, we get ready for the fourth week of BattleBots coming in. With supporters, of course, got the fight cards today. Um, uh, as we're recording this, it looks like it's going to be Quite an exciting episode. I'm here, of course, with Pori Nog, as usual, my U.S. correspondent. Uh, I'm very excited, uh, as well, after last week's exciting episode. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? I thought it was a really good episode. A lot of the fights really had me on the edge of my seat, and I appreciate that. And I like the fact that there were some really like gnarly upsets in it as well. Oh, my God. It was crazy uh, how many upsets there were with um, the stuff going on. With, um, I, I think the Lockjaw match was a bit of an upset in its own way. But also the stuff going on with um, Cobalt. Cobalt was one I thought that was just going to go rinse through its fights. Um, yeah. Upset in our own right. Uh, we, all of us were saying during our prediction thing that Duck was going to go through um, fairly easily in those fights. Didn't end up happening that way. It was a very crazy week. And, of course, another big upset this week, probably the biggest upset out of everyone this week, uh, P1 versus Valkyrie, my uh, favorite fight of the week for sure. What was your favorite fight of the week um, coming out of this episode, Pori? Um, Probably also P1 and Valkyrie. Um, and, you know, it just was really exciting because it was like the whole time I'm just like, oh, my God, is P1 really going to do it? Because I predicted P1 to win that because I like the predictor of the underdog a lot of the time. Right. And the whole time I'm like, oh, crap, are they really going to do it? Right, I knew it had to be a perfect fight, and they just about did it. The only real downside was they lost the wheel at the end. It became a bit of a cripple fight, but um, I really do think that that one last lift, of course, we'll talk about this more in the breakdown episode, but uh, that one last lift at the end there really was that one little thing to push them over the border. And yeah, it ended up being a unanimous decision. A control bot beat a top-tier spinner on a judge's decision. Proof that pigs can fly and all that good stuff, but... uh. We're not going to waste too much time here. We're going to get into the news. Of course, if you like what you're saying here at the Combot Collective, you can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, and you can join our um, Discord community. Uh, of course, you can subscribe here on YouTube, and you can find, rate, and review our uh, podcast series on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and wherever you find your podcast. Now, let's jump into the news. And now, jumping into the news here, uh, nothing game-changing this week, nothing crazy like... Um, the Ray Billing stuff, though we will give an update here. We do know that uh, the Robot Ruckus South Florida Fair event is going on right now. has been going on for the past couple of days. And in fact, we're starting to near when the actual competition should begin. So hopefully we'll get some updates on that soon. But moving into what we got going on this week, um, let's talk about what's going on with Paytrain first on their uh, social media on uh, January 21st this year. Just a couple of days ago, the team behind Paytrain announced that uh, – Chicago independent pro wrestler Santana Starks will uh, be joining the team for the 2022 season if Pain Train does get accepted, or perhaps if it does compete elsewhere. Maybe we'll see that. Um, the name might be familiar because recently he has competed in Norwalk Havoc events, uh, as recently as the, Nor never, the, no the November Norwalk Havoc event um, with robots like Twisty and Ormoral Crixus. Um, and Moral Crixus is a a robot that has had a good bit of success and has gotten numerous second place and first place trophies in past events. And um, these robots have shown a lot of potential in recent times, which is why um, uh, Santana Starks has gotten this opportunity to be on the Pain Train team. And uh, we look forward to seeing them hopefully in 2022. Uh, of course, Pori, we know it's been a rough start for Pain Train um, starting this year. We just saw the Deep Six fight a couple weeks ago. That uh, It's a bit of a rough prepared job, and I know we both had... Uh, Pain Train is one of those robots that could really be really I don't know, that could really be a dark horse for Balbots this year, but uh, we haven't seen it yet. But hopefully, we will end up seeing it in twenty two, two thousand twenty two. Bounce sorry. back, right? I uh, hopefully we'll see a bounce back. Um, a bounce back. It, I, I, I still I still have faith in them. Yeah, first round's always a bit tricky, especially for new designs. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran team or not. Um, but we do know it's a really it's it's a serious team that has a lot of them. Um, 
veteran experience on it, and that just shows it right there. Um, and we know that Santana Starks is a very uh, – he's really good. He's getting addicted to the craft. I mean, they even posted in the thing that recently he's been uh, slowing down the indie bookings to do more stuff um, in Robot Combat. He's even driving 300 miles down to compete in a Midwest event. Uh, I believe somewhere in that region. I don't know the exact area. I don't remember what the event was called. Um, do you have any thoughts on this little uh, interesting news story here? I had to cover it because, of course, I'm a big wrestling fan. And any chance to mix up my two favorite things, I will take it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool. I mean, I, I, I like that more people, more walks of life are starting to get into the robot combat. It's starting to become very diverse with people from different hobbies getting into it and it's pretty exciting oh yeah it's super cool uh and you know he's got he's gonna cut the good promo he's gonna be up there with like doom kid and martin mason and uh whatever that thing ethan kurtz did uh last week was but uh i i hope we see something crazy i want some pain train versus mad catter you know there's already norwalk implications there in fact the upcoming main event as we can see right here has a bit of norwalk implications i'm excited for Saw Blaze and Mad Catter, but we'll get to more of that uh, later this week. Very excited to see um, Pain Train announce some new people for their team. Very interesting to see how this ends up going. Uh, super happy for the Santana Starks, and look forward to what the Norwalk crew here do as uh, they move through this year. And uh, moving on, a bit of personal news here. Um, our U.S. correspondent here, Pori, he is a he has acquired a very interesting here here. Uh, yeah, he's he's acquired a very interesting thing here from uh, the Deadlift team and their big uh, Balboss auction they recently did. What did you uh, end up getting? I know Deadlift's one of your favorite teams this year. Um, yeah, so Deadlift is my second favorite robot, I think. And uh, they did a they did some parts off auctions recently, and I bought one of Deadlift's lifting arms. Um, I bought the lifting arm that was used in. 2020 uh which uh it used when it fought uh you know gruff and uh when it beat jackpot but unfortunately they um they mixed up the ship they put their long shipping labels because they they sold two arms so i actually received the uh the one that was used in the jackpot fight that happened a few weeks ago where it has like the, the tip sheared off of it so that's cool i mean i am gonna they are they are fixing it they're gonna send me a shipping label and then i'm gonna shoot it over to the person who won that and that person's gonna shoot over my arm to me so it should be okay but i mean it's still kind of cool because i can like you know I, I still get the feel the lifting arm from this season and it's heavy as hell like i didn't expect it to be that heavy i don't know why but right, I mean, it's just it's a really bonus cool history with that that's cool yeah like it was it was very it's a very neat piece i'm looking forward to the other arm i'll definitely post a lot of pictures with it when it arrives whenever that is probably like next week or something if i right. imagine did you uh did you did you take pictures of the arm you have right now already? I think you did, right? Yeah, I I, I took some pictures of it. I need to put some of them on the uh, thing right here, and I'll put some of the deadlift arm that he you're gonna get in a few days um up there yeah. as well. Probably some footage of deadlift to go with it. Uh, that's freaking badass. Um, like I, I was suggesting to you before um, we started recording here, you need to splice um, some photos together so it looks like you have both arms on one table. <laughs> Maybe even it's edit true, like a picture of you together where you have like one arm like over this shoulder of one arm. I know I know they're heavy, and one arm over the other yeah. shoulder, and you're like, "Yo, I am yeah, deadlift." That'd be pretty badass. Yeah, I could be deadlift, but it's um, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's my f it's my fourth robot part, so that's always a neat thing. Oh, that's badass. I am I I still have none. I I, I have never made the plunge. I I just. I'm too over here. I'm, I'm, too I'm only playing. well. This is the first time I've spent like a lot on on a part because uh, my first part was a whole arm. And from that's a whole arm, no less. Yeah, yeah. So like that's a big part. Like it's massive. And but like all my other ones are like smaller ones. Like I have a a wheel from Tantrum, which was like thirty dollars or something. It was thirty or forty dollars. Uh, a a sprocket from Jackpot, which was used when it fought Lockjaw and Rotator, which is kind of cool. Mm. That one was really cheap. And then I got a an axe backwards tooth for free from a, from a member on a Discord server because he had like ten of them or something. He's like, "Here, you want one?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll take an axe backwards yeah, tooth." Yeah, that's badass. Do you know what fight that was from? Um, the 
Okay, so I don't know what like, the tantrum one is, but I kind of think it was from Sawblaze because there's like a groove in the wheel that's like a semicircle, and it seems like it might be shaped sort of like Sawblaze's forks, but that is very much speculation. There's no confirmation. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned what their jackpot one's from. Yaks backwards, I think it's from its fight with Malice, if I'm not mistaken. But ah. I, I, that's for me speculating on, like, video footage, though, because it did have different teeth in different fights. I think it had those teeth in the Malice fight and the, uh, maybe the Shredderator fight. That's, that's, that's badass. You have a bit of the jackpot tour there. You got to look at the first deadlift versus jack, the second deadlift versus jackpot arm. You're about to have the first deadlift versus jackpot arm. You got the jackpot sprocket. That's super yeah, awesome. I'm, I mean, maybe you get to see both the deadlift arms. Would that be something? Mm-hmm. You're just you're just acquiring that whole fight now. Yeah, <laughs> just getting everything, everything deadlift jackpot, the ultimate rivalry. Wow, that's spectacular! I need to get something from Rampage and Sub Zero at some point. Put it up there. I know everyone. I know everyone. And their dog has been DMing me about. I have been pinged at least ten plus times um, about various things about Bronco going on sale. And if I had the money, I, trust me, I would have I would have an entire Bronco at my house right now. I also wouldn't be living in an I, apartment, but I digress. I've considered buying those Bronco parts, but the big issue that with the Bronco parts is like almost all of them are really rusty, and that's kind of a deal breaker for me. Like they like they got most of them got really rusty, and then the flipping arm that wasn't rusty like went for like you know like a couple hundred dollars. I'm pretty sure, and I'm that's a little out of my price range because I'm cheap. But yeah, my big goal this year is a ribot is at least one ribot part. That's that's the big goal. I mean, I pretty much spent my part budget for the year on deadlift, but if and when ribot parts go up, I'm definitely gonna get something. They should have sold some of that ribot foam. That's like free food right there. People would have bought yeah, that. I, I wanna well, I wanna I want some actual I want like wheel, I want a whole robot, you know. Right. Know. That's fair. <laughs> just yeah, just a yeah, whole robot. We want yeah. you want, you want um, David Jin as well. Hang out there for yeah, a David Jin in the box. Just me and him hanging out, playing <laughs> playing uh Super Nintendo, you know. There you go. With Robot. And capping off our news here, a personal favorite of mine, of course. I'm always putting over my Robot Wars Series 2 uh, alumni here and a proper veteran of the sport representing Switzerland this year. He was representing France in 2016. Uh, we talked about this a little bit on our Instagram page when the news first broke by uh, Team Captain Rob Knight, originally of Board of Fame, that uh, the Walden Overlord will likely be returning for the 2022 Battlebot season. We uh, we don't know for sure. We do know that's their goal. I'm pretty sure they've put it in hashtags, Battlebots 2022. Things like that. I mean, Battlebots themselves have been liking the post, so take that for what you will. There's no reason why they would deny a bot this fantastic. If uh, they intend to come, they intend to be prepared. I mean, we got it right here. Every time. We got it right here. Uh, the pictures of the new robot. Some of the uh, footage of Rob Knight has posted of the uh, the CADs and stuff of it and the brand new concept art, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, covering some of the, sp- the specs of the robot, uh, Looks like this uh, new Walden Overlord has a set of legs of sorts, um, potentially sitting under all that armor, lined up with uh, four motors, um, four wheel drive, but set up like a two wheel drive robot. All the motors, of course, lined up in a row, each motor running at 600 watts. Um, and along with that, 16 other motors are inside of a Walden Overlord running various um, systems and contraptions inside the system of the, the robot. Of course, it's a very um, interesting robot, very. Um, very complicated, one of the most complicated in all of BattleBots with all the things going on with it. Um, on top of that, the legs sit on a platform type system, which uh, looks like it'll allow uh, Overlord to raise up all the way like a standing person. Uh, I don't know if that's completely possible or if that's just what the, they wish they could do. Um, for, judging from descrip- for judging from the descriptions, I'm not completely sure. Uh, it'll be interesting, interesting to see, though, what ball and Overlord could balance in a situation like that. Maybe with some gyroscopic force involved or something along that line. Um, but the final setup shown in the concept art here shows the Abolin Overlord, um, well, armored, which is a very fascinating thing, something that we're not used to with the robot itself. Um, I don't know exactly how well Abolin Overlord could stand, though, um, if it was doing something along the lines of that. 
But yeah, no more strings attached on this brand new Evolving Overlord. It doesn't look like the uh, the joints of the arms on the robot are as um, freely moving, but there is still four points of movement, and this system does look a lot more robust, at least as robust as it can be for this um, what Evolving Overlord is. Um, I don't know if it can make uh, the bot a contender, but it will be interesting to see what they could do with this. Um, Pori, do you have any thoughts on the, the unique developments coming out of this team? Yeah, I mean, it... The robot looks really cool. I mean, Evolve and Overlord is definitely a really neat robot. Um, you know, not every robot has to be a contender, you know. Like, you know, you got your Chomps, you got your Evolve and Overlords. Like, it's just like some some people just want to show up, you know, grab out even. Like, some people just want to show up oh, yeah. showing off some cool new tech, you know. Like, Double Jeopardy, too. Give, give them all, give them like a, give them a deep Jenny Taft segment, you know. Like, give them, give them some love, some... And who knows? Maybe it'll win a fight, but I, there, I don't see any possible way that a wall and overlord gets rejected, honestly, because it has the makings of everything. It has a, it has a builder who is an OG. He's been doing the battle mm -hmm. bot since '99. Um, he's he's been known to build stuff. A wall and overlord's already existed, and uh, plus it's unique. It's got a cool design, and Greg Monson's even gone on record saying that. He wants to see more robots that are humanoid in BattleBots. So, Absolutely, that's the stuff they want to make. Yeah, so he he's gonna want they're gonna want that, and I don't see any. The only way a bald and overlord doesn't show up is if a travel restrictions or b Rob Knight just doesn't have it ready yet. Like those are the only ways I think we we don't see a bald and overlord. Yeah, I bet we at least very we at least see a confirmed come supporter reveal time if we get that this year. It's gonna be interesting, and like I said, I, it might not be a contender. Maybe it will be. Maybe we'll see it win a fight. But um, I, I I'm very interested to see what they can do with the arms and stuff. They have the little triangle things for all the arms in the pictures. That obviously has to be a placeholder. I mean, I listed some setups here. I would like to see. I want to see the shield return. I love the shield. I think that was a good idea, especially if it was made out of something like HDP, HPDE, um, something like what Huge is made out of. Um, that could be a really useful thing. I want to see some spears. I would love to see some lifters. But most notably, I want to see a hammer saw in this robot. I imagine this thing with like two saws looking like something out of that Simpsons episode, swinging them around. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I would be a yeah, that would rule. Really um, I love seeing international representation. Obviously, Rob Knight, not originally from Switzerland. Recently, I moved there, of course. Like I said, he represented France in 2016. Um, but it, I love the international representation. Stuff like that's why I love oh, yeah. This Is Fighting Robots and King of Bots 2 so much. Um, seeing teams from new con countries and continents bring what they can. But yes, very, very fascinated and very intrigued with the Bottom Overlord, as I am with every year. I've been trying... I've been posting online every year saying, hey, I want a Bald and Overlord back above any other robot. And it uh, looks like I might be finally getting it. So we'll have to see as now we're done with the news here. And it's now time to move to our TCC 10 power ranking for the third week, third episode of BattleBots. And now it's time to jump into the TCC 10. A bit of a lineup shift for this week. Uh, some robots have moved up. Some ro robots have uh, moved down. Seems like the top robots seem to have locked in their spots. If you have looked at the uh, Instagram when we posted on our page, get a bit of a teaser on what we're going to talk about here. But now it's time to break them down in depth. As you can see, uh, right here we have our top, our bottom five, sorry, uh, up to TCC 10. The first five we're going to break down. So let's not waste time and jump into our power rankings here. Coming in at number nine, falling down a little bit from uh, last week, but not, not a lot. Of course, three robots have jumped in, so... Moving from, I believe, 6 it was last week to number 10 here. Hanging it on the list, but I bet we'll see it. Actually, you know what? We might not see it fall off um, after this week. We'll have to see what ends up happening. We're talking about Tantrum here, the punching uh, robot that made the top 4 last year. Of course, King of Bots appearance as well. These guys, seems reasonable robotics. Really strong start. Blip almost made the list last week. Uh, came just short by a few points from our voting system. Um... Absolutely amazing performance against Malice. You want to have a great start against a playoff caliber robot. That's exactly what these guys showed up and did. Um, unfortunately, they did, lead. they did lose the weapon, though, at the end of the fight. I think that plagued them for a good bit on our list here. 
put at the bottom of our top 10, but in the top 10 nonetheless, Aaron Hill, I'm sorry, not Aaron Hill, that's Blip now, Ginger Schmidt and Alex, Ginger, Ginger Schmidt and Alex Smith, um, fantastic drivers, we saw it last week, and we're probably going to see it deeper into the competition, we know they have a hefty round two opponent like Lee and Gigabyte, um, so that's going to be a fantastic fight, as now I move to our number nine, a robot actually that was on this week's squeeze episode. Coming in at number nine here, and it's fascinating. Lockjaw actually almost made number ten, um, even with the zero one record. Almost got enough points um, on our combined uh, list to uh, make it on. But nope, just an honorable mention, really, for Lockjaw, an unofficial honorable mention. The robot that managed to beat it in our first split decision of the year, um, newly captained by Robert and Chris Cowan, of course, is Copperhead, who uh, stood and delivered for um, their uh, main event showing here at uh, Week 3 of BattleBots 2021, Episode 3 against Lockjaw, of course. It was a real brutal back-and-forth fight all the way to the end. Great aggression shown off from both ends from each team here. Um, but in the end, Copperhead was the robot using its weapon more than the other. Lockjaw's weapon died out halfway through the fight. Um, was a proper slugfest up to that point. And even afterwards, with Lockjaw, of course, always having... Um, it's anti-spinner plow on deck, either for horizontal or vertical spinners. But the tenacity of Copperhead and the real reliability bugs that they fixed up, especially in 2019, I feel like Copperhead was really just there in 2019. Um, and now that they've really stepped up, uh, we're, we're seeing that firsthand with the 2020 season, and now they're showing it here. But this very well may not be a fluke. We know they're going to be getting a red-hot fusion, who we'll be talking about very shortly here and likely their next round. That could very well be a main event. But right now, Copperhead sits really pretty. It's probably the top drum spinner in BattleBots right now. Minotaur um, lost that first step. Of course, they had a really respectable losing run, but we haven't seen much out of them. While Copperhead takes the split decision victory over um, Lockjaw and moves high and mighty into the second round of BattleBots. Coming in at number eight, I uh, want too much to talk about here. We're talking about Rotator um, after its judge's decision victory over Kraken. A unanimous decision and a very destructive decision, but a decision that did leave uh, Rotator stuck for the first minute of the fight. Locked up in Kraken's jaws, of course, jaws of doom, and um, couldn't get out. They had to do the unstick, had to bring out the crowbar. They were doing the crowbar chant everything, uh, which was a fun sight to see. But after that, like we said, Victor Soto, a fantastic driver, super methodical in the way he drives, the way he can spin Rotator around the land, super impactful strikes with a good precision, good precision and strategy. And we saw it in this fight. Kraken literally ripped to the gums with um, that beautiful blow that took out both the teeth and the top um, jaw panel of Kraken. And um, after that, busting the crusher system, absolutely obliterating Wally the Walrus. Shredding the wheel, of course, credit the Kraken for surviving this onslaught by Rotator. But Rotator showing it this brand new disc that it's running, um, whether it be an undercutter or overhead mode. It's a real contender here to, to be a damaging robot. Did it last year, did it this year. And still not the the, mo the biggest knockout contender. Still need to show that. But we did see some real durability from Rotator. Kraken came in this year boasting that they are the best crusher, most powerful crusher in sports history. To this point, at least, and they couldn't get through Rotator. Not at all. I had to come to an unstick, which was some testament to Kraken, but ultimately Rotator did pull through with a very powerful showing here, keeping them on the list and at number eight. This robot sat above Rotator by one point um, last week, and now it's sitting, by Ro sitting above Rotator for one point this week. They are in the main event this week as well, so we're going to see them likely rise or fall very drastically here. We're talking about the madman Martin Mason with Mad Catter, of course, driven by the very talented Calvin Eva, um, like we brought up last week, driver of Lynx, driver of many very powerful robots, like Mad Catter here. These guys, like Kenny Florian put it last week, he out, they out yeti yeti, um, absolutely obliterated the returning veteran with their brand new design. Uh, made him look like a brand new team, honestly. Uh, with how they, they ripped them apart, took the wheels off, took the back paneling off. It was a very fantastic showing by um, Matt Catter in, this, in, in that opening round. Um, main event caliber robot, and we're now seeing them get their first career main event, and easily the biggest fight of their career against Sawblaze coming up here. We'll talk about Sawblaze very shortly. But yeah, this is a Norwalk Havoc rematch. Um, these guys have met plenty of times in the East Coast scene. 
And it, it's going to be super ha- super exciting to see Mad Catter and Saw Blaze fight in the main event because Mad Catter deserves it. We've seen this robot really rise through the ranks, competing in King of Bl- Bots, sharpening its blade, showing up as a walk-in at Battle Boss 2019, and now one of the most powerful, one of the most versatile robots in the heavyweight scene today. Uh, Mad Catter at number seven in a very deserving spot. We'll see how it moves up later on the the season. And a robot that has arrived, moving up, and is just turning a lot of heads here. A huge upset being the former TIFR champion, Cobalt, um, in his opening week fight. Of course, sub-driven by Mac Maxim, part of RDC now. But Cobalt's still a very deadly robot with uh, the unique wedge system, but wasn't enough for fusion. This was definitely not the fusion we saw in BattleBots 2020. This is a brand new fusion. Um, same team, of course, Team Wayachi, the, the, the one team you want running your robot. They fixed the speed controller issue, it looks like, because both the horizontal spinner and the vertical spinner of Fusion running at full force. Both land very impressive hits, but the vertical spinner, the real star of the show here, the little wedgelet forks they had up front, I wasn't buying them, but they won literally every exchange. Matt Maxim, a fantastic driver in his own right. He was trying to get weapon to weapon Reese Ewart the entire fight, and it just was not happening. Every impact was Cobalt's face getting ripped away more, ripped away more, ripped away more, and eventually killed it. Put it on its head in the same corner of minutes or threw it like a million feet up and uh, knocked out Cobalt. And the dominant showing, too, was a midway major, but it was a major victory for Fusion here. Um, biggest victory of their career easily because, like I was talking about last week, you know, Fusion had a lot of can crush victories in 2020. Wins against bots like Aegis, Rampage, uh, Matt. War Easy, sorry, not Matt Catter. We were just talking about Matt Catter. Um, War Easy, but this isn't a fun, this is not a win like that. This is a win against a proper uh, former major champion here, and hopefully we can see them add on to that. You know, the concept of the way the gyro cancels out with the horizontal and the vertical spinner. This bot has a chance to be super scary, and um, this was a real test for it. It's running better than even Hydra right now. Like, this is the bot everyone's talking about on Team Wayachi at long last for Reese Ewart. They are the star of the show, even if it's just this week. Um, but they will be taking on Cobalt next in their um, schedule, so it'll be very interesting to see how, uh, not Cobalt, Copperhead next in their schedule. It'll be very interesting to see how that goes down. Copperhead, of course, like we were just talking about, red hot in their own um, round one matchup. We'll have to see how that one goes down. And our last robot coming from the third week of the Battle Bots 2021 season here, episode three, is um, Black Dragon, the Brazilian robot that did manage to pull off the win, pull it off by knockout fashion, and beat a bounty boss in the process. Uh, Ice Wave, of course, a legendary reboot era robot that has had its moment in the sun. One of the most dominant forces of the 2015 season, the bot splitter of the 2018 season, a robot that should have won most destructive that year. Black Dragon just went right through him. Uh, uh, flipped him over in almost under a minute. Took him to the pulveriders. Absolutely shredded up the front wedge. The, um, the internal combustion engine spinner, the Husqvarna blade of um, Ice Wave could barely get going because Black Dragon was a full-on aggressive assault. I mean, that's what you expect from you Ryer team. You guys have always been absolute bulls in the arena. That's why they win medals in pretty much every weight class and category with this one design that they know of, they have polished to such a level. Black Dragon is like the peak um, of a URI or bot with how it's designed and its architecture, the wheels, the weapon, everything for that nature. Um, there's a reason why I drafted it in King of Draft and uh, the foul bot, the fantasy league I run. It's it's a, it's it's a top four robot. Did top four last year and it could easily do top four again this year. In fact, I would expect it because this was a very strong showing. One of the big issues I had with Black Dragon last year was the lack of knockout power. All of its wins, or most of its wins, were by judges' decision. Very rarely you could finish a robot off um, for the entirety of a fight. Cause that knockout call had to go to the judges a lot. But not this time. Absolutely not. Took Ice Wave to town. Threw it over. That was it, and that was that. It was easy knockout, and it'll be very interesting to see what uh, Black Dragon draws next. Because you can go a lot of ways with it, but... Uh, who knows? I, I wouldn't mind a rematch with Minotaur, but uh, I don't think they're going to get Minotaur someone that's sturdy so soon. Uh, definitely needs to have a main event, I would I would think, fairly soon. But, uh, yeah, stoked for you, Ryer, and hopefully we'll see a very deep run for Black Dragon in 2021. And now as we move on to our Final Four here, this is a very familiar Final Four, in fact. Same Final Four as we had last week, so we'll 
make this a little concise here. Um, there is some position changes, though. Some people have changed their mind um, comparing how those runs have came along. But we still have four robots that are really sitting at the peak of uh, the Battlebots field so far here in the round one. As we finish up round one, I should say, we're going to start seeing some round two fights in this week four episode. But starting off at number four um, is Whiplash, still sitting in that same spot as last week, of course. The first upper deck KO of the Battlebots ever. In fact, um, Matty Vasquez, one of the best drivers in the world, called his shot through Bloodsport up onto the upper deck. And that was it. Fantastic KO. The stream X system of Bloodsport got locked up, I believe, the team said in their fight report. It's unfortunate to see. But, you know, these guys got setups galore. You know, we've seen this plow setup on Whiplash now evolve through two seasons. We saw it last year. Uh, it absolutely handled Valkyrie in two straight fights, among some other spinners. And now we're seeing him take care of Bloodsport, you know, one of the best horizontal spinners of the entire Battlebots season last year, best horizontal spinner in the world even, maybe, um, with the new Wedgelet set that they have, and did it handily. The way that this guy just comes through, Matthew Vasquez, comes through with Whiplash and just does every fight so handily, just with such great technique, almost stranding robots in the most unexpected of spots. It's something to behold, and something we're going to have to get very used to because Whiplash is a perennial championship contender, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of it. And I'll doubt, I doubt it's going to leave the TCC 10. And now it's time for our top three here, and it's the same top three we have seen every TCC 10 so far. Um, these power rankings have held strong for these three robots we saw in episode one that have just dominated. It's upsets. Super strong performances out of these guys, but they have shuffled around a little. We've seen now, as you can see here, um, Captain Shredderator now back to number three, which is a bit strange. Um, I don't know. I guess one of the other guys changed their mind and switched them back around. I don't know how this happened here because I've kept them stationary throughout this whole thing. But um, yeah, of course, Captain Shredderator, you got still buzzed about, still talked about one of the biggest upsets in Battlebots history. Um, Huge win against Tombstone, who we're going to see in a very interesting matchup um, coming into week four here at BattleBots. A very interesting round two matchup for Tombstone. Um, the future of Shredder Raider is still unknown. We don't know who they're going to fight next or even a hint of it. Um, plenty of full body spinner shells, though, they have on deck that we still haven't seen. Um, plenty of surprises from the Team Logicom crew, and we look forward to all of them. Hopefully we can see these guys stay in this power rankings list because... You know, they've won over a lot of people um, with this recent performance, and hopefully they can keep those people fans. Another butt that has been a real asset on my fantasy team, Uppercut has just, what a fight it had in that first week. It's why I have it as my personal number one, because I do have, I rate Gigabyte so highly, and the way it handled Gigabyte, made use of the short corners, obliterated it with two vicious hits, three vicious hits, in fact, and, uh, Sent those guys packing around to 0 one an expected 0 an unexpected 0 one at that. Um, it's what you expect out of Alex Satori and the rest of this MIT crew. Um, these guys have always delivered. Uppercut has really not been a bad robot outside that first career fight they had um, in that one rumble. And since then, it's been all smooth sailing. These guys have been an absolute stud, an absolute force, one of the most destructive vertical spinners in the entire world nowadays. Kind of taking that role Cobalt had doing the things that's done to robots like Gigabyte and uh, Uppercut and Railgun Max, and even taking a fight to bots like Bite Force and stuff. It's been an absolutely fantastic run by Uppercut, and we're going to see even more of them in the future. And last, still at the top, still doing very good for themselves, Jameson Go, the man who has won more Norwalk Happy events, I Think. I hope I'm right about that. Than anybody else. Enter this familiar throwdown, sitting pretty as Young the seventh seed. We're talking about Bob Lane here. We know it has a mean weapon. We know it is well driven. What's Jameson got to do to make a real run here? I mean, that um, about covers it. Jameson and Sawblaze do just about everything right. They're the favorite in most fights they go into, which means there's a lot of pressure here, but Jameson is confident in his bot, confident in himself, and he believes this is just another step closer. Really set the pace for the whole fight, the battery fire. I mean, even John Boy Media has talked about this fight now on their YouTube page. Super excited to see that. That's some real traction for the BattleBot scene there. Uh, and we know Chris Rose works there too, which is super awesome. But 
Sawblaze is just such a force, such a consistent force. We've seen them do this now four straight seasons. We probably could have seen them even do it more in 2016 if the rules were so different back then, um, at least heavily different. You know, Sawblaze had trouble winning that fight against Razorback, and maybe he wouldn't have won that fight today, but uh, I digress. This new Sawblaze that we've seen now and the stuff we've seen it do against robots like Overhaul, against robots like Rotator and uh, Whiplash, and now Minotaur, it's 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 easily one of the most consistent robots every year. That's now a perennial championship contender, and this could very well be the year it takes it all. They've sat at the number one spot of the TCC 10 three weeks in a row now, and then it's going to be really make or break, because if they win this uh, main event they got going on right here, they could easily sit on that TCC 10 top for another three, four, maybe even five weeks. Sawblaze has been red hot after that win. Staying relevant, staying popular, and uh, hopefully we can see it stay, uh, stay, stay trending in that way. So that caps off our weekly news in TCC 10 here. Our first BattleBots video of the week posted here at the Combot Collective. Of course, you can expect within the next couple of days, our prediction video for episode four. We'll be talking about this main event here, Sawblaze versus Mad Catter. We'll be talking about some of the other exciting fights that will be happening that day of uh, the fights for BattleBots. And then the following day, we'll be breaking down the episode three fights. Fights like Slamo versus Hypershock. The big upset P1 got on Valkyrie. The win Black Dragon has over Ice Wave. And of course, the somewhat controversial matches of Riptide versus Huge and uh, Copperhead versus Lockjaw. We have plenty to talk about with that, but uh, capping it off here, a bit of a recap here. Our top 10 for the TCC 10 this week. Number 10, Tantrum. Number 9, Copperhead. Number 8, Rotator. Number 7, Mad Catter. Number 6, Fusion. Number 5, Black Dragon. Number 4, Whiplash. And then, of course, the consistent top 3. Number three, Captain Shredder Raider. Number two, Uppercut. And number one, sitting at the top of the TCC 10 for its third straight week. Uh, Sawblaze, the real winner of the first round of BattleBots, seems like, off a judge's decision, no less. Um, as we wrap it up here, of course, recapping the news. New Evolved and Overlord concept is out. Santana Starks looks to be joining the Pain Train team. Uh, we can expect a bit more coming out of Robot Ruckus with uh, their heavyweight event. Um, happen still continuing through this month. And, of course, Pori Nog. Our co-host with a bit of a bot bling. He uh, accidentally was sent one deadlift arm, and now he's getting the other. So a uh, very interesting week. Not the most newsy of news, but some really fun stuff that we were able to talk about there. As we now wrap up, this has been the Combat Collective, and uh, I'm Sterling Brown. Of course, you can find me on Instagram, at SterlingTXTG. You can find my other projects later on in the year. You can find Pori Nog at his YouTube channel, Egg. I'm sorry www.dippyegg.xyz we'll be leaving that in the description below you can find his Instagram at at Porinog and um, yeah that's going to wrap it up for us here you can hear our outro now of course the, uh, done as always by our team member Sevalent um, like I already said this is the Combox Collective it's another week of BattleBots TCC 10 and we'll catch you again next week with our next power ranking thank you so much for listening and good night this was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest hard ram and this color.